What is up YouTube, Kevin Wolford123. Today's video is about the Game Boy Pocket. Now, if you're here just for the Game Boy Pocket, you might not know who I am. I like to go around car boot sales and charity shops and find games that I'm interested in, systems and things like that. And if they are we try and fix them. If they're working, that's fantastic. Anyway, so in the video, if you haven't watched it, go check it out. Uh, this one is uh, basically found in a pile of junk, like zero love. It was as if someone got a whole bucket full of random stuff they found in a puddle and just dumped it on the side. This was very poorly. Now, it did work. The power switch, as you slid it on, wasn't satisfyingly clicky. It would just sort of grind across, and then as it went across, it would flicker the light and then come on. So it did still have life in it. The problem being is, um, it, as I said, it was very poorly. It seemed to me that there was uh, liquid under the actual lens. So to me, this has been submerged in some sort of puddle. I was gutted, um, but for two pounds, this was, I wanted to make this like new again. Opened it up, took it apart. Uh, all the uh, sliders on the sides need to be desoldered and cleaned thoroughly. They were absolutely grim. They were full of like corrosion. That's all cleaned out, the switches cleaned out. Cleaned it up fully, stripped it, isopropyl alcohol, cleaned the whole lot, right? Now, this shell was grimy. Again, look at the video, but it's come up quite nice. Now, there is a few marks. There's a little mark here. There's a couple of marks here. Now, they are deeper than, you know, you can just make out of the tilt. Scratch there, but, you know, overall, it's not bad condition. Uh, couldn't salvage the sticker on the back. Sadly, the sticker was, like, torn through the laminate, which means it was either leave it like that, which was sticky, or take it off. Now, I chose with taking it off. I know some people might have said leave it, but when you're playing the Game Boy and your fingers are on the back of it, you don't really want to feel that stickiness every time and then go off and be picking everything up and it's sticking to your fingers. So that had to go. So what I'm doing is a few mods. Oh, yeah, and the battery cover was missing. So I thought, you know what, I'll leave that for now. So it all works. It's all good and ready to go. But I thought maybe we can make this better. So I got in contact with Retro 6 and they've hooked me up with some gear. So I've got some really cool bits to add to it. So first of all, da -da -da, the most important bit, we've got a sticker. So we now have a sticker for the back, but it's not gonna be going on this shell. We're gonna go straight in with a heavy hitter. Look at this. So they sent over the Game Boo Pocket. Now look at that. That is absolutely incredible. Look at, uh, you know what? When I looked at these on the website, I was like, yeah, I was expecting it to be okay. Now I want all my systems printed like this. Retro 6, come on. Print all the systems. <laughs> PC Engine, go for it. I want it. Um, but wow, like the detail, I hope that comes across. It's absolutely immaculate. It looks gorgeous. Not one single floor. And of course, a massive upgrade there. Sorry about the fingerprint in the back. That's why I opened it up and touched it. Don't touch it. That sounds wrong. But you've got a screen protector here. This is glass. Massive upgrade. The problem you get with the uh, standard screen is, well, it's not gonna show up. They're, they're plastic, which is nice enough. But if anything touches it, certain granule of sand or a piece of salt or anything on your fingers as a kid, that will uh, sadly, sadly scratch your screen with this one. Plus it's custom as well. This would look cool on there, but this one, wow. Absolutely fantastic. Now this is gonna have an IPS mod screen in it as well. A little bit of a bonus, right? So these have tabs inside. Now with a normal Game Boy Pocket shell, you, you basically have to cut away pieces inside the case to make the screen fit. The new screen is incredible, by the way. The new screen is really crisp, really clear. It's got like a pixel mode um, that basically makes it like mimic the pixels of the original screen. I also have a Neo Geo Pocket color, uh, which my partner got me. And with a pixel mode, it's, it's so beautiful and it should look incredible on this as well. Wow, look at that. I'm just loving the case. That is incredible. Like, honestly, it's fantastic. Back back to it anyway. So the pieces of plastic that are inside, you can snap off. So they're no longer, you're, you're not long, like buying a shell like this and ruining it or buying a third party shell and then cutting it up for hours. It's already done. You don't want the tabs, you pull them out. You want to keep the tabs, use the original screen. You can do that too. That's fine. Anyway, look, just look at that. That is incredible. That is so, so good. Beautiful. Anyway, so to go in this, we're gonna put this to the side. But if anyone's wondering, right, this shell isn't just being scrapped. No, we've got a reuse here, recycle. This is a decent shell now it's been cleaned up. It's not bad at all. Um, this is going to my friend Jake. He wanted a yellow Game Boy. So I said to him, have it free of charge. So he's gonna have the shell, reshell one of his that he has duplicate of. And now he's got a yellow one. So yeah, getting some love. So we're gonna put that to the side. And the air freshener went off. There's no uh, killer robot in the house, it's fine. 
So we've got a few things. Um, we have, I'm gonna go straight in with a very tiny, very small, not what you're expecting. This is an audio amp. This is a clean uh, clean audio amp. This will give you uh, 500, well, I say over 500% audio boost to this system. Now, as you know, the Game Boys, even like the DS's, DS lights, things like that, um, they have very quiet audio. I get it, you know, the mums and dads probably back in the day would have been, well, I know they would have gone mental if, you know, you had one of these installed back in the day. But yeah, we're adults now, we can do what we want. So this little uh, mod here, we're gonna solder in and it's gonna increase it by over 500% the sound. And also, it just cleans up a bit of the noise and things like that. So it's really, really advisable to put in these systems just for that extra oomph, you know? Now, of course, if you're gonna be doing the sound, probably want a new speaker too. Nice speaker, cheap and cheerful, do the job. Uh, the one that was in there works, but it wasn't as clean as it could be. You can't really clean down the old speakers. With the water it had, it is working and it does sound okay, but sadly, um, the back's a bit rusty. I mean, you could clean it up thoroughly, but for the sake of a few quid, like, get another speaker, right? Comes with a sticky mount as well, so you can mount it inside the case. That's gonna be fantastic, and that's gonna be wired to that, and that's gonna be wired to the system for the sound. Next up, buttons. Now, we needed buttons for this, of course. Uh, the buttons on the uh, yellow system uh, are kind of like a, the, I don't know, the, like a charcoal. They're black, but they've got a bit of grey to them. They have a slight scuffing to the top. You can see that. You could probably polish them up. Is it really, you know, is it worth it? We're going with the white shell. And with the white shell, of course, black buttons. Nice black buttons. Replicas. Fantastic. Black and white works perfect, right? I guess you could probably uh, do see-through buttons and maybe LED them up. I just find that a bit of a, you know, I don't know, i say waste of power add LEDs to it, but you can if you wanted to, but yeah, these are, yeah. You gotta remember, the uh, Game Boy Pocket uses AAA batteries, whereas the uh, Game Boy Color uses AA batteries, so if you do use rechargeables, and I'd recommend getting really high-end rechargeables, 1.5 volt ones that are constant power delivery, because um, the, the modded screens tend to uh, draw a lot of power, and with some of the cheaper batteries, they can't deliver that power, which causes screen issues and makes it turn off and things like that especially if you're using like an EverDrive. So just a heads up, but don't let that put you off. Um, just get good batteries, don't cheap out and start using Kodak from Poundland because that's not gonna work. Okay, next thing up, we have the clean power mod. I can't get over how small these are. Now I've got quite chunky fingers, but like, damn. We've got this clean power mod and this is gonna replace the power board on there to give it a cleaner power output, uh, a more stable, less draw, and actually help with power in the screen um, more efficiently, so I'd recommend getting this as well. I can't believe how small that is. I've got I've got quite wide hands, but this is this is a diddy little board. It's very cute. Kind of uh, kind of want to see it all the time. It's pretty cool. I like it. But then the best bit here we go. Bam! The sticky bit for the screen. I'm only joking. There we go. That's going to go in there. That's going to be stuck in afterwards. But they were kind enough to send me a little Brucey bonus. And if I'm honest, this is sick like this is so so cool check this out this is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog from Digimon he looks so cool anyway this is Mewtwo from Pokemon this is really really cool like the screen protector again is glass and actually uh, has print on it to match with what's on the screen you know what you've done guys you know what you've done you've sent this and now I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to buy everything again and I and buy it and do this one up now. I have to, right? That's that's right, yeah. Maybe that could be a good project. I love I love the DMG, you know, the size of the DMG. I've got chunky hands, like I've got, you know, shovel like they're not huge hands, they're just very wide. You know, the pocket kind of <laughs> kind of fits my hand. Whereas this 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 is comfy, this is really comfy as well. Like this is this is beautiful, I love this. I absolutely love this. The, the print detail on this, again, is fantastic. And like the uh, coloring on the hands is actually that bright that it almost looks like it's LEDs. That's really cool how they've done that. And this is with like a transparent case. That's the word, right? It's not see-through, just transparent, just slightly see-through. Again, I'm assuming this shell has also had a battery bay, yeah. Battery bay's uh, good for a mod to put a, uh, power board in there, rechargeable battery. So that's very, very cool. Boom. 
So yeah, thank you very much guys, that's incredible. I didn't, didn't know I was uh, getting this in the post, so I'm really, really excited, that's fantastic. And this one, yeah, that's gotta be the next project, right? That has to be. I mean, you can't, you, you gotta have what, like one of each, right? You, you, you got your pocket, DMG, you know, na the natural uh, order. And then we're gonna go to the color. I kind of feel like we have to go through all of them now. But yeah, this is this has turned out fantastic. This this is gonna make this pocket look incredible. I'm absolutely absolutely over the moon. So anyway, that's it for this part of the video. Uh, next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna be installing the parts in this and seeing how we get on. I've just got a couple more bits in the post I'm waiting for, which is a new soldering tip, as I wanted to use a fresh one. Uh, my ones are getting old, and I know you can use them for quite a while, but they are. I've had them quite a long time for my Hakko 888D, and a few more bits for soldering to make this job a lot easier. So, see you in the next part. Okay, so the first thing I did was remove the old power supply for the system. Now, as you can see, there's three holes there, two on that side, it just sits in like that. Desolder each of the holes, it just drops out. And the new one that's going in is this one, this tiny little thing. You know, things get smaller and smaller as technology goes on, so uh, 20 years time, this will be uh, under a microscope to fit. But yeah, this is gonna go in place here. Looking for a viewfinder trying to do this is impossible. But um, yeah, it's gonna sit there. Yeah, but properly and be soldered into the three points there and two points that side and that's going to replace this old thing here Give it a lot more cleaner power. Let's get that soldered in Okay, so the old one's been removed as I said and the new one is now soldered in two points on the right hand side Just here which are extremely tiny and three points on this side here And afterwards just gone over a bit of IPA and a cotton bud to try and clean it It's very hard to get right in there. So maybe with a toothbrush it would be a bit easier uh, So I might have to break up the toothbrush, but yeah Sold it in, nice and strong, and that'll do for that bit. Okay, next up, which is really, really simple with the Retro 6 kits, is you've got to remove some tabs on the inside of the case. Now, I've already stuck the speaker down. I did buy the speaker from them also, which is fantastic. A lot better quality, and uh, yeah, it comes with a little sticky ring, so you can just put it in there and it stays. But yeah, these just got tabs. So on a normal shell, you have to cut all of this stuff out. On this one, it's just a few tabs. You just pop them off, like so. And uh, yeah, away you go, I'm gonna put the screen in. So as I said, remove the tabs and I'm gonna put the sticky like gasket in place. Uh, only one issue I had with this gasket is just on this corner here, it just seemed a bit too long. So I just trimmed a slight bit off the edge there. That's no problem, a pair of scissors just cut in a straight line and now it fits properly. Otherwise, for some reason it was bowing up like that, like it was stuck between the two, but that could be something I've done. But as far as I can see, yeah, it was just the way this one was made. There's no problems though, it's all in there, all sitting there. Time to drop the screen in. With the screen now in place on the new gasket, time to install the ribbon cable. Now that the screen's in place, I've removed the old speaker because we won't be needing that anyway, and placed in the membranes and the buttons, and we're gonna drop in the motherboard now. And now with the free screws provided, they are replacing the ones that are on the motherboard. The speaker's sitting there ready to be put into the amp. All screwed in place, ribbon cable tucked over, and then the connection. And last of all, once the ribbon cable is attached, the right hand side is going to the first pin on the power switch, and the other side is going to the touch sensor at the top. That's probably the worst bit for me, that was the hardest bit, was trying to get that to fit with the capped on tape. Um, it was so fiddly, and I do need to find my tweezers, because that would have helped so much. Now it's not back together fully, the batteries are in, and there is a fingerprint on there, because I'm an idiot, and I did touch it with my little finger, so I'll clean that off with an LCD cleaner, but I'm just gonna test it. As you can see, the screen is wonky. So open up again, time and move it. Okay, so the screen's installed, uh, everything's back together. I used a bit of Kapton tape to hold in the sensor at the top. Uh, the solder has been added to the um, audio amp and all the wires connected to the speaker and to different parts of the board. It could be a little bit neater, but you know, it's gonna be closed up anyway. Um, yeah, the solder joints are okay. I just need to clean a bit of the flux off and I'm good to go. Okay, and here's the finished product, uh, all back together, sticker on the back, screen installed. We've got the audio amp on the back of the speaker wired in, which will make the audio 500% louder, or over 500% apparently. It's got the new power board. I couldn't find much about the power board, but as far as I know, I don't know if I've got, got this right or just making it up, but when you install it, you lose the ability of changing the brightness because it was always on max. I'm not sure if that's a thing if I'm just imagining it, but you cannot adjust the brightness and it did work before, but it doesn't now. So I think that takes place of it. But as the power runs cleaner, maybe it allows it to do that and it's less power usage, so makes it more efficient so you can have it brighter. Anyway, I'm gonna turn it on 
uh, on full volume. Uh, getting this screen on, no problem. Getting a protector on without getting dust under it is really, really tough. Um, it took many, many goes at cleaning, but even when I've done it, there was still one speck of dust under here and it just drove me nuts. So unless you're in a dustproof environment, um, like some sort of like uh, medical dispensary, um, there's no chance you're gonna get that controlled environment. So I'm gonna turn it on. Super loud, that's that's like really loud. I've got that on full. Oh, that's super loud. It's so obviously you're not gonna play it that loud. Um, so yeah, the other thing you've got is a touch sensor in the top here which you install and you can change the brightness, uh, not the brightness, sorry, you can change the color of the screen. You know what, if I do it this way, it's easier. I'm just flicking through it. I can't remember how many there is, but um, yeah, there's quite a few. But if you hold it, keep holding it. Right, now that's gonna be hard to get on the camera, but it's actually added like a pixel grid. I don't know if you'll see that. It looks like the original screen, like pixels all over it. And that looks really, really good. I really like that mode. Um, the red's quite cool. But, let's stick with the green, right? Gotta stick with the green. But that is it, successful. Um, if I had to give this a score out of 10 on difficulty, I wouldn't say it's super easy. If you're a beginner, this could have some, um, you could have some trouble. Like the audio amp is very, very tiny. The power amp is pretty tiny, but I wouldn't say it's impossible, as long as you take your time, you're using the proper equipment, flux, take your time, you should be okay. Now, there's nothing saying that you need the audio amp or the power one, but I would recommend putting them in. Um, yeah, the screen was quite easy to fit, quite uh, quite easy, yeah, just a couple of solder points on the top, you know, like one to the power switch and one to the touch sensor on the top. And that's it, Bob's your uncle. Um, yeah, overall, it's fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous case. I love, I love the print design. It is so, so crisp. It's better than I ever could have imagined. When I, when I saw these online, I wasn't expecting them to be as good as this. Honestly, I swear to God, it is super crisp, super pretty. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, now it's like the ultimate Game Boy Pocket. Still as light as before. Very comfortable, comfortable to use. And yeah, looks incredible. I can't fight with it, but yeah, I'd probably give it like a, I'm going to say, if you're a beginner, it's probably going to be quite hard to do. I'd say intermediate to pro to install it. Um, the screen, no problem. The little bits, power and audio, that's where you're going to struggle if you are doing it, in my opinion. Um, they weren't the end of the world for me, no problem, went in fine. Uh, and I'm nothing, I'm not, I'm not a pro, intermediate at best on a good day. But yeah, um, as long as you take your time, it should be no problem. But the screen upgrade is definitely worth doing, 100%. Now, the thing you'll remember with these screens as well, they use a lot of juice. Um, so they do recommend like lithium batteries if you can get them, AAAs, or rechargeable AAA batteries, um, high quality, 1.5 volts. You want constant 1.5 volts. Now with my Neo Geo Pocket Color, I use the Kratax batteries, Kratax. Um, they're about 29 pounds for four AAs with a charger and they're super fast charging and they work fantastic. And I've never had a problem on the pocket. I get like five hours. And you've got to remember on the um, Game Boy Pocket, the uh, batteries are AAA instead of AA. So they're going to be a lot shorter. I think you get on average about two hours off the top of my head of gameplay, which isn't so bad. But um, yeah, you can still use the, the wall supply if you need to. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend getting those because if you don't and you use cheap like alkaline batteries or ones that are like 1.2 volts, it won't always give enough power to the screen, which will cause it to flash or go off or have glitches. Yeah, you really want to use high quality batteries. And here we are testing the Game Boy out. Uh, the screen is super, super crisp. Like it's never going to carry across on a YouTube video, but that is like emulator quality pixels are so sharp now you can change the color of screen like i said before tap in the top many different colors but if you hold it i'm gonna go for the pixel mode boom and then you get that actual pixel look there you go does that, does that look all right can you see that like that looks cool that looks that looks really really good depending on what color you want to go with like there's so many different variations so so pretty just waiting for the upgraded batteries. Um, like I said, I recommend the uh, Kratax batteries uh, for the Pocket. So hopefully they're good for the Game Boy Pocket too. But that is that's so good. That is so, so good. It's just emulator quality. I thought I'd add this in so you could actually see it in person. Well, on a screen. Not really in person, but from the viewfinder. 
super, super cool. Really love this mod. Incredible.